beautiful people. <laughs> Welcome back. Wow, that was a that was a big old bear hug. Um, I hope everyone is having a beautiful day today. I hope everyone is just, you know, living your best life post-Halloween. Maybe you have a little candy hangover, and that's okay, because let's be honest, it's just, huh, it's that time, okay? So, let's go ahead and let's, ooh, apparently I have a candy hangover, but uh, let's get into today's video, shall we? Boop, 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 because for, <laughs> wow, uh, because for today's video, we are going to be getting into a, I almost literally just forgot what we were here for, uh, but today's video, we are doing a Beautylish haul, and this is actually a box full of goodies that I picked up during their gift card sale, which if you guys don't know, it's it's over now. I think it only lasts for like four days, but every year they do a gift card sale where you can purchase um, $100 worth of stuff from their website and you get a $20 gift card in return. And this year I actually shopped the sale a little differently because normally when I go into it, I'm, I'm very like strict with myself, like no page, you can only have restocks, you need to get your powders and you're this and you're that. And the things that, you know, I repurchased throughout the year. But this time around, like I said, I did it a little differently because I actually posted on here, I think maybe two or three weeks ago, I posted a Beautylish haul where we were testing out, you know, just random products from the site. And you guys seem to really, really enjoy it. That being said, I do realize that, you know, we just did one of these videos, like I said, a couple weeks ago. And I just really hope you guys like it. I hope you enjoy it because for me, these are my favorite kind of videos <laughs> as of late to do. Like I'm to the point where I don't even care if it's new makeup, older makeup that I'm just now testing. Like it just, it doesn't matter to me because I love testing all the, all the things and just getting to play with new formulas. And I mean, let, let's be honest. Okay. During a sale, like that's just the time to shine when it comes to testing all the new things. So that is what we're going to be doing today. And uh, let, let, let's get into the video. Actually, wait a second. I'm sorry. Pause. Let's not get into the video. Hello. What am I thinking? Um, Because for those of you that are new here, I like to pause at the start of my video and introduce myself. So if and you are new here, hello. Hi, my name is Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. Welcome to the channel. Um, again, if you're new here, I do post three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they usually go up right around like 7, 7.30 ish a.m. my time here in good old Northern Michigan. So we do have bright early morning uploads. Uh, and then also, if you if you haven't maybe maybe noticed as of uh, recent in like the last several months, uh, I am trying to hit 10,000 followers over on Instagram. So I do also ask that if you haven't followed me yet over there, everything is linked down below. If you would, you know, go over, check it out, see what I'm all about. And if you like it, maybe consider following me at, just to help me meet that goal. That would be fantastic. And this is something too where, you know, when I started asking you guys to follow me over there, um, I started asking you because obviously I have a goal to meet. I want to get the swipe up feature. I'm, I'm really just trying to grow that platform. But I really thought about it and I realized I hadn't really done anything to reinvent that platform in a while. And so as of late, I really have been upping my content. There's there's a ton of new stuff. I do um, makeup reels, like fun little, you know, 15 second makeup videos. I do makeup IGTV videos, which are get ready with me. I do mini makeup reviews. I do like uh, makeup inspo photos. I do plus size fashion, fun little photography things. And all of that's just on the feed. You know, that doesn't even include like the random day to day Insta story. You know, we're hanging out in my office. We're doing PR unboxings, regular unboxings, um, taking a walk, talking about how I fall out bleachers, you know, just, just all the things that occur in like my standard day to day life. Um, it's really all over on Instagram. So I've kind of more or less just created an extension of myself over there. And, you know, I just really wanted to make it something that was more fun for you guys, more, more, um, involved than just like, oh, hey, here's a selfie every couple of days. Like it's, it's really fun. It's constantly new and evolving. And I do hope that you, you know, take a second, go check it out. And, uh, with that being said though, let's go ahead. Now we can zoom the camera in and we can get it started. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's do it. All right. Now, instead of me zooming in the camera, I vote I just scooch my little happy ass forward and we're going to call it a day. Okay. Okay. By the way, if you're new here also, um, I do link everything down below. So if you're wondering, you know, the necklace, the earrings, the adorable sweater, which I just got this from Target. Um, look at how cute it is. I think it's from Eva and Ava and Viv, Eva and Viv, whatever, but it is so cute. It's like a three parted little sweater. Oh, I just love it so much. Um, but yes, I do what I was saying. I do link everything down below makeup. If you want to shop it, outfit, all the good things. All right. So let's get going into this big old beastie box. Cover up my address. My God, privacy, privacy. Um, let's get into, what is wrong with me today? Um, let's get into today's video, which by the way, I did, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, unbox. There we go. I did unbox um, a lot of this over on Instagram. So you may already kind of know what's coming, you know, just, just in case you like that behind the scenes. Again, follow me on Instagram because y'all have, or some of y'all have already seen this and I am so excited. So, okay. First of all, this is uh, actually my little, um, wow. Do I have words today? This is my 
uh, free samples. There we go. That came with the order, and I actually got quite a few free samples this time around. I have one from By Terry. This is their Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. Ooh, child, I'm excited about that. So we're going to use that. And then also from Ilia, I got, uh, what is this? This looks like a tinted lip oil and uh, soft touch. Oh, another finishing powder. Okay, so we have those from Ilia. And then I also got a sample from Cure Wise. This is their lip gloss sample. So we're getting all kinds of good little samples all over the place. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead. Let's actually focus. Calm down. And um, let's see what else we have in here today. So it looks like going into this, I have three new things from Cure Wise. I have their powder highlight, a single shadow, which looked so beautiful online. And then I also picked up their concealer, which if you missed it, by the way, I did just do a full uh, foundation roundup video. I'll link it up here. And ew, excuse me, um, in that video, I did talk about their new Cure Wise uh, weightless foundation. And in that video, by the way, not only do I obviously talk about this, but I also talk about the 10 most recent foundations that I have been testing using day in, day out. And I kind of rank them for you so you know what I like the most, what I like the least, why. Um, and based on my skin type, you know, you, you might love some. I have everything in there from oily skin, uh, dry skin, normal skin, all the good things. So definitely check out that video. Going into today's video, I'm going to grab out these two items first, which are both complexion based because I have obviously, like I said, the new Cure Wise concealer, or at least well, I think I said that. I don't know. But then to go along with that, I also picked up this, this uh, foundation from Ilia. It says it is lightweight smoothing with aloe, mastic, and squalane. And what does it say here? It says it is a clean, fragrance-free, skincare powered foundation that delivers light to medium buildable coverage with a smooth, luminous finish. Fin finish. I have my Invisalign in. Very lispy. Uh, what does it say here? This weightless serum blurs imperfections and melts into your skin. It is a nourishing blend of mastic squalane, aloe, rose hip, and jojoba, leaves, leaving your skin more refined, hydrated, and soothed over time. Ooh, okay, that sounds very nice. So let's start off first. I am feeling so sassy. I think it's this, I think it's these little balloon like sleevey situations. Like I'm just feeling like I'm so, so sassy. Like I'm gonna balloon my little arms up and fly away, float away, do my thing. I'm just I'm feeling you know what I'm saying? Anyways, hi. Um, let's go ahead, first of all, here. I'm going to get some prime on, and I'm going to use my Tatcha Silk Canvas, the original one, uh, because I've been using the liquid silk canvas every single day forever, and I just think, you know, variety is the spice of life. So let's, <laughs> variety is the spice of life. So let's go from the liquid to the solid version. Okay. Okay, you guys, so I'm an absolute dingus. I'm going to have to run off of camera because I found, I remembered from Juno & Co., I picked up some of their brushes um, just because I saw them on Beautylish. They were super affordable, actually, and I wanted to test these out, but while I was there, I also picked up another one of their microfiber sponges, and I picked this up because um, it's their usual, like, Juno & Co., if you've never seen them. They have, like, a microfiber exterior on them. And what this is good for is like helping your skin really keep coverage on the surface. And I figured with a foundation like this that's more of a, you know, serum lighter coverage option, I thought that it would be cool to try it along with a sponge like this just to see if I could keep the coverage. Anyways, I was sitting here and I just realized I have this and this is, like I said, their, their angly sponge. So it has like these cool little cuts to it if you wanted to, you know, carve out the face. But I need to go wet it. So I'm going to run ahead really quickly, get this done, and uh, then we can pop on here. I'll be using this, a regular sponge and uh, maybe maybe even a brush if I think the, uh, the the mood calls for it. So let me go ahead and get this wet real quick. Okay, okay. All right, so let's get going into this foundation. I am in the shade or I, I picked up the shade, bitch. We, we don't know if I'm in this shade or not, but I picked it up in the shade SF 1.5 Mallorca. Mallorca, Mallorca, I don't know. Uh, but that's the shade I grabbed it in. And let's go ahead. It has a pump. That's nice. Thank God. We love a good pump. So I think that this color is actually going to work pretty nicely. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit light, but I think that I'm also just used to always purchasing the wrong shade. So, you know, we, we can make it work. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get the good and work done. Wow, that actually has a beautiful luminosity to it. You guys see that on the skin? Like, hello. Wow. wow. Okay, so while we're getting this blended, can we just talk about the fact that um, winter decided to descend upon northern Michigan, um, literally between last night and today. And as I'm sitting here filming this, I look out my window and it is completely gray. Like, there, there is no light, and I'm sure you guys can tell because you can always tell on camera. Um, like, no matter how hard I try to fix it, like, I just don't have the right lighting set up. I'm sorry. I'm not a professional. But uh, as I look out this window, it is a complete whiteout. Like, across the road, there is so much just snowy, crappy, sleety nastiness. Ugh, I'm not here for it. 
Like, I I'm that person, yes, you know, November 1st hits, and I'm kind of like, oh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, but that doesn't mean I want it to actually look like Christmas, okay? Let's not get crazy. And I just, I feel like somebody out there missed the memo, because it's just snowy nastiness, and I'm not loving it. Anyways, let's go ahead, let's get back to the situation at hand, okay? I, I with this foundation, I am really liking that level of luminosity. I know I've said that, but I think it is really settling nicely onto my skin and like really pressing in. Um, and I quite like it with this sponge, but the only thing I'm, I'm feeling with it, and I don't know if it's like a combination of the foundation, the sponge, whatever, but I am feeling like a, a light heaviness on my skin, especially like right through here. So what I'm gonna do, I, I'm gonna do this in two different steps. I wanna build up and see if I can get a little bit more coverage first. And so I'm gonna take just a little bit more foundation, like right along my jawline. This is where I tend to need a little bit extra because I have cystic acne for days. Y'all know I got this brain tumor, and oh, let me tell you, if you don't, by the way, if you missed it, I have an assumptions video, I'll link it up here. Um, but I got this brain tumor, right? Makes me go through like puberty, pregnancy, menopause, all at the same time. And um, I'm not living for this whole like little cystic acne moment we've had going on <laughs> no thank you um but let's just see what the buildableness here actually you know what that did build up to i would say like a like a light medium let's not you know get crazy with it but it did build up a little bit um but i am noticing with that build that it did take away a little bit of that nice little light shine that it had i think if it were me i would probably uh, leave this at one coat and just really let it uh, do its thing, you know, get the, get the coverage you can, but not go too much farther than that. After that, I mentioned that I wanted to do this in two parts. So now that I've built up the coverage, I'm going to go in with just a regular little sponge here. And I just want to press it in and see if the heaviness that I'm feeling is just um just a result of that sponge like maybe caking it on a little bit too thickly. <laughs> thickly? <laughs> just maybe it's a little bit putting on there too thickly. You know what? I actually think like uh, pressing it in with this one and removing any excess really does um like change the change the feel of it on the skin i think with that i'd have to stick with my previous comment that if you are wanting to go in with this foundation probably best to just you know use it as a light coverage and be good with that because i think when you start to build it up i just i don't think you're getting like anything um that's overly amazing especially for the way that it feels on the skin because it just starts to feel a little bit heavy but at one coat it feels like a really nice um kind of like a hydrated light coverage bb cream like it just it feels really good looks good on the skin all right so from here we're gonna start going in with the cure wise this is their invisible touch concealer and i picked this up in the shade f 110 and oh my god their packaging it's so beautiful like this lid by the way weighs like 100 pounds it's so nice oh luxurious and let's take a little bit of this i'm very curious to see how hold on i gotta, I gotta actually get some product on my little um i is my um, guys, I think my concealer is, like, dried out. Like, inside the tube, it actually looks a little bit dry. I'll have to, um, go on their website and see if that's something that it's supposed to be, because obviously I'm getting a little bit on my face, but, like, the texture of it is just, it's a little bit off, and I don't know if it's supposed to be dry or if I just have, like, a weird batch. But I'm just gonna go in here and, uh, apply... You know, like my normal amount, use it to lightly shape out the face because this color actually does work with this foundation. It has a little bit of a like more pinky undertone than I was expecting, but I don't think it'll be an issue. So a couple of problems. Number one, the sun just decided to come out. Dear God, I'm going to have to fix that. But also this concealer, it's like not wanting to blend on my under eye. And it is so weird. It looks almost like... um. Like it's, it's dry and like crackling down onto my skin. Okay, so hold on, I'm bringing you guys in super close. I'm killing all of the up close lights because I want you to see like under my eyes, do you see how it's like really settling in? And it does, it's not just like the normal, like, oh, it's settling into my under eyes because I'm used to that. This is like almost a, a dry down cakey kind of situation. And I've never had to deal with this. Uh, it, it, like I said, it's almost like the concealer is like old or it's a bad batch or something. All right, you guys. So really quick, I had to make, make a couple of adjustments. So first of all, I had to pull this window down because that sun just keeps coming through and it keeps throwing my white balance, which is why when I was up close, I was turning orange. So I zoomed myself out and obviously I put that down so the 
lighting is going to be different. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, talk about this concealer. So I've been sitting here just kind of letting it like rest because I, I kept hoping that what would happen under the eyes, like maybe it would warm up and it would lose like that crusty little crackly situation. And it's definitely not. Okay. As I sit here, it just keeps looking worse. So what I'm going to do, and by the way, what I was going to say about my jaw right here is it actually looks like there's sand like on my face. Like the, the texture is just so like dry and, and cakey and weird looking. Like I, I've never had this kind of an issue and I'm not thinking it's the, uh, the foundation because like right through here over my cheeks, they still look fine. What I'm going to do for this is actually just put that concealer off to the side and I think I'm going to send Kira Wise um, like a, uh, a DM on Instagram and just ask them like if this is normal, if this consistency is right because I really feel like there, there's something odd going on here like between the formula um, and especially because I've tried their other stuff before, um, you know, their foundation and that cream blush, which I freaking like so good. That cream blush is one of my favorites. So I know that they know how to do cream products and that's why I'm, I'm really thrown off by this. So uh, like I said, I'm just going to set that one aside and I'm going to take one of these lights, I think, and maybe put it over here because I look really dark on this side of my face. Okay. So I don't know if any of that helped or made a difference, but I cracked this window just a little bit more. I moved this light and I'm going to go in with a little bit of my Benefit Boing <laughs> Cakeless Concealer. This is in the shade two and I'm going to use this kind of under the eyes in the same areas. Like, look at, look at, look at that formula, how it's just creamy and it spreads. Um, and I'm going to use this to shape out the face a little bit in those same areas. And then we can move on. Guys, if I haven't said it enough to you as of lately, <laughs> thank you so much for sticking with me and for dealing with all of my technical uh, situations. So now that we're to this stage, I have the concealer blended out and it actually looks really beautiful up against this foundation. Like everything was just very seamless this time around. So that is nice. And let's go ahead. We're actually going to test out the by Terry. This is their hyaluronic hydra powder. And uh, what, what, what do we need to know here? Is this going to be like shimmery or something. No, it says it's a colorless Hydra Care powder with a matte invisible finish. Interesting. I definitely think based on this stark white, um, I do think it's probably going to be a flashback type situation, but you know what? That's, that's okay. I suppose we'll still give it a try. Oh, you guys, this right here. <laughs> Is this not the world's teeniest little powder puff? <laughs> this is supposed to be a little powder puff. <gasps> Don't get me wrong. This is completely useless. Okay, I got this big ass man face. This could literally never do anything, but I just think it's so cute. It looks like a little Mentos. Cool. It just, it's so cute. Um, anyways, okay, let's move on. Okay, so the texture of this, it's the kind of powder that it... Um, it actually just feels slippery. Like it, it's gl the glidiest. That is the weirdest texture. Um, like the refinement of it, it's, it's finer than even like, like the Fenty powder. This is one of the finest ones I've tried in terms of texture. And this is finer than that, but it also has like this slip to it. Like it, it feels like almost like there's a lubricant <laughs> in my fingers, which I know sounds weird, but it has that kind of, of slip. My God, that is bizarre. So to get into this, I'm just going to be very, very careful because again, now that I've seen, um, not only the texture, but the color of it and the fact that it is going to be super white, uh, like super duper stark white. I am going to take a little bit of it on my little sponge here and press it into my under eyes. <laughs> Tastes like I just ate a crayon. Okay. <laughs> we got that one sorted. Okay. So I just decided we're going to go all in with this powder and like really go for it because my under eyes are like super stark white now. And I just figured, you know what, we are we got to be fair. We got to test it just like we would any other powder. Okay, so you guys, I'm having like quite the confizzly moment with this powder because every time I turn around, I feel like it's doing something a little bit different. Um, okay, so let, let's go ahead and start with the basics. Obviously, you guys can see it is a very bright powder. Now, with some, um, you know, white powders like this, translucent, whatever, sometimes that does settle out into your skin tone and it kind of adjusts. So I'm not going to hold it, you know, too hard on that one because it very well could lighten up and, and just melt into my skin a little bit. But the thing that I'm noticing about this that I think is really, really interesting um, is that on my face, and I think you might even be able to see it like on the side of my nose, right here up under my eyes a little I I'm starting to like randomly lose patches of foundation like I'm just seeing that there's like no um no coverage product there at all like whether it's foundation concealer whatever at the same time so at first I was like okay like obviously it's picking up my foundation this isn't gonna work then upon further and I mean like very close inspection right in these areas I'm noticing that this powder it like smooths over top of your skin and I don't mean just like oh it smooths it out you know like a normal powder I mean like it's smoothing it out to where, um, excuse me, I'm very busy. It is smoothing it out to where it looks very, um, 
like airbrush like I don't have any wrinkles I don't have any like any even pores I don't have anything in these little areas and so with this powder I'm, I'm kind of like going back and forth with it because it's doing some weird things but it's also doing some very 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 good things and I'm just not sure like how how I should feel about it and you know what you guys something that I just thought about and I'm actually embarrassed that this just now occurred to me um but this might be one of those powders that it doesn't work well as like a setting powder because it's so fine uh, and because I do have so many wrinkles and cracks and crevasses but it might work really really well as like just a finishing powder overall because if you think about it all of the things I just said it's doing like the smoothing and the, the blurring effect that would be beautiful as a last step you know under the eyes just a really quick kind of dust over but it wouldn't work because it's so fine and so thinly milled um, it wouldn't work necessarily as like a, a powder like what I'm using it for so I think actually what we're gonna do is hold on to this powder and we might very well revisit that theory at the end because I mean <laughs> honestly why not um, cause I'm, I'm very curious to see given, given the, uh, the way that it's melting right now, like into the skin and even like up under my eyes, I feel like the, the color, the, the whiteness of it, it has subsided a little bit. So maybe this, maybe it's a little bit, you know, workable just in a different way. Maybe, maybe that's the key here. Um, so let me, let me, let's see what else we got. Okay. We, we need to keep this moving cause dear God, we've spent eight hours on three products. Let's move it along Paige. All right. So really quick here. I just sat down at my entire face with some of the Celebration Illumination Pressed Powder just to make sure you know everything is is good and even going forward all right so next up now that everything is fi finally set down let's go ahead and get into this new palette i picked up this is so beautiful it's from juno and co and this is their perfect me cheek defining kit in the version cherry bomb and i'm going to start off with this one right up here this is their baked um baked bronzer shade and we're going to start with i'm thinking just like my standard little duo uh, fiber brush here and we're going to lightly get that worked all over the uh, the face you know what really quickly i just want to give you guys a swatch of it um just so you can see like i'm going very light-handed with this because it is more of a cool tone shade typically for me i do prefer to go in the warm direction with my um my sculpting products so i just want to make sure that i'm very light with this because it's going to perform more like a contour than it is like a um you know like a warm up your skin kind of bronzer and i will say you know just on the product itself i actually quite like the um the texture of this it's very beautiful it's working into the skin seamlessly and the shades themselves are actually very soft like just when I even swatch just that one they do have a very um, a very nice thin mill to them right now to go into blush which we're still gonna use out of that same palette I'm actually gonna bust out one of these Juno and Co brushes that I picked up oh god that actually feels nice and this is their 03 angled powder and contour brush which again obviously I'm gonna use it for blush and actually that does that feels very nice um, so let's go ahead and get into this palette I think I'm just going to take some of this pink shade right here, which does appear to have some shimmer. Oh, dear God. Okay, that definitely has um, a... Oh, oh, I am so glad that I swatched that. She is rich. Okay, so we're going to be very light in terms of application. Let's pick up some pick up some and then really dust it off pick it up make sure all of the bristles are nice and coated and then very lightly just kind of pop that on my god this brush feels so nice it's like very very soft i can barely feel it on my skin it feels so soft okay love me a nice soft moment you know what this blush is actually kind of nice too i'm going in very light-handed and just working the uh the excess product all the way over the cheek <laughs> like the, all of this right here is from like two little mini dunks of course i'm just lightly taking the uh the excess that i have on the brush and kind of popping it a little on the nose. And you know what this is kind of reminding me of? Like as far as the uh, the texture and the way that it looks on the skin, it's reminding me some of this Melt one, the, the Buzzkill, because this one also has like that more sheeny color to it. Which by the way, if you're curious, I've talked about this a lot as of late, but if you want to, I'll link up in the cards my Sephora VIB recommendations and my, uh, my Month End Favorites. I'll link both of those up there if you want to check them out um, and get a little bit more info on that specific highlight, or I'm sorry, that specific blush but with um this application it does kind of remind me of that because i'm getting like this beautiful light kind of glowy cheek situation which is really nice and what i appreciate about this formula similar to the bronzer is that they're both very very um light as far as the texture and the actual mill of the powder goes so you really can work with them 
to build or soften um, like as far as intensity or whatever you're going for and they blend out really beautifully which again for it being a shimmer I was a little bit worried about it emphasizing like my texture and stuff but it actually just blended in beautifully like it looks god it looks really nice okay so at this point I'm actually going to ch uh, change up a couple of things because I'm noticing on my skin like up close it just needs a little help like under the eyes I need <laughs> ironically enough I need a little um like a, a blast of brightness down there so I'm gonna take some of my Fenty powder this is the Fenty Pro Filter in the shade Butter and I'm gonna take a little bit of this and just lightly kind of shape out the face under the eyes um, especially but then maybe even a little bit yeah maybe I'd even do a little bit on the t-zone just because I feel like the uh, the base that I put on here it definitely kind of went through the ringer in the first couple of products and I need to try to help it out a little bit. All right, you guys, so really quickly, um, while I was off of camera, I did apply that um, that Fenty powder, and I let it sit there for like roughly, you know, five-ish minutes or so, and then I just wiped it off because I had to check my voicemail anyway, so I figured, <laughs> what the hey, we'll just let it sit, and I lightly shaped out the rest of the face, and I do think it helped in terms of complexion, like especially around the mouth, because that area just needed a little bit of help anyway. As far as that palette goes, the one from Juno & Co., I actually don't hate it. I think it looks really nice. Like I said, it buffed into the skin. The blush looks beautiful. Um, but I am going to go in and add just a little bit of warmth because I think that my skin desperately needs some. So I'm going to grab this uh, Charlotte Tilbury. This is the one I use all the time. And I'm just going to add like a, a, a tiny, tiny bit. And just because I prefer to have my face have, you know, a little bit more warmth to it. Not just, I don't mind like that, that cooler tone, the, the contour shade I went in with, but I do like to pair it with just a little bit of warmth. So really quick, as we go into the rest of the products, I'm just going to set my face down with my Urban Decay All Nighter. By the way, this is the Urban Decay All Nighter Ultra Glow, not the regular one, the Ultra Glow. Okay, don't get it twisted. I've been using this one a lot lately, and it is so beautiful. Here, let's go ahead and move on to some highlight action, and this is also from Cure Wise. This is their Light Slip Powder Highlighter in the shade Beam, which I think, again, is their lightest shade, and oh my god, this packaging. Look at this. Oh, it's just like their cream blush. It looks so freaking high-end, so luxurious. Ooh, I live for their packaging. Oh my god. Just... I'm sorry, I just can't. Oh, so good. This has almost got like a, like a, um, reminds me of like a baked layer on top as far as the texture goes. Ooh, okay. Um, it's definitely more on the gentle. Oh, wow, that's very much on the gentle side. You guys can, act, let me hold on. I need to like build up a swatch. I feel like this is not giving me much of a, oh, there it is. Okay, there you go. You can see it a little bit better. I think part of it is that not only is it a more gentle glow, but the actual shade itself kind, kind of just matches my, my see-through skin because, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite pasty. So I think that, you know, we're having a couple of situations there, but that's actually really beautiful. Is that going to cast on my face? Uh, it very well may. Okay, you know what? Let's just find out. So I think for this one, I'm going to go in with a stiffer brush. This is the Sigma Small Contour F05. And I'm going to go in with this one just because I want to really be able to buff the color in and get as much payoff as possible. So I'm just going to take and build it up. Oh, she's cute. She's gentle, but she's cute. Okay. So you know what? Here's the thing. I actually don't hate this, which uh, for me, you guys know, I'm, I'm typically more of a, um, like an intense glow kind of girl. Like I, I really love to just get after it and be a little more aggressive with my highlight. But as of late, I've had like this new found appreciation, I would say, for like medium, uh, medium intensity highlights, because I feel like, you know, even though they don't give you the most, you know, obviously the most intense glow, um, they do give you like the most natural looking, like healthy version of your skin. Maybe it's just because as of late, oh yeah, honey, we're going to get that chill lupa going it might be a little bit of grease girl like light on that grease but we're still gonna get a little um but i think maybe too part of it is that i've been really enjoying like lighter coverage you know light to medium as of late and so maybe it's just like i'm appreciating lighter things all around you know lighter uh coverage lighter glow lighter whatever um but this is just it's actually really pretty and you know what it builds up really beautifully too like i don't know if you guys can see but i am getting like a really nice um, all over cheeky glow moment. Actually, you know what? Maybe I, this one is like so on the verge where like in on camera, I'm seeing a little cast, but in real life, I'm not seeing really any. So I actually think this is like the kind of highlight that for my skin tone, I think I can make work pretty much on its own. So really quick, I'm going to do my brows. This is the Benefit, uh, precisely my brow pencil. And then over top of that, I'm going to use the Benefit Gimme Brow, which apparently I've <laughs> worn off all the info, but I think this is in like 
shade 4 or something like that. And I am just going to very lightly work both of these through the brows, get myself a nice little defined moment, nothing too crazy. All right, you guys, so I am back. Obviously, my brows are done. And let's get into my eyeshadow for today. And for that, I picked up <laughs> this one little single shadow. And I picked this one up also, of course, from Kier Wise. Because, first of all, just look at this packaging, okay? I'm obsessed. I think at this point, we can all kind of gather that I'm obsessed. This is in the shade Wisdom. And I just thought online it looked so beautiful, like the, the shade of it. But I was really drawn into this one by the color. It has like a, almost like a brown with a pewter undertone. And it has built into it like a satin sheen. I just thought this would look beautiful as like a all over the lid, you know, kind of quick going out the door kind of color. And there were actually people in the, I want to say they were in the reviews of the Beautylish poster, the Beautylish listing for this. And they were saying that this was such an easy go-to kind of color. And I just, I don't know, I'm really into stuff like this. Stuff that's kind of one and done, throw it on, blend it out. And it still has, you know, all the depth and beauty of a regular eye look, but it's just super, super simple. I'm just, I'm very into that these days. Now, really quick, I am going to throw down a light little coat of my um, Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer just to, again, give me some kind of a light little base. The way that I'm going to work with this shade is actually to pack it all over the lid first. To do that, I'm going to go in with this old It Cosmetics brush. It's kind of a flat, um, a flat, fat little packer brush so you can pack it down and then blend out the edges. And I'm going to take this and uh, go in to the shade and just, again, lightly pack it all over the lid. Ooh, that's a really pretty color, actually. And I want to make sure that I keep it nice and concentrated at the base, like near the lashes. And then as I move up the eyelid, I'm going to start getting it blended. Ooh. Okay, yeah, I actually really like this color. <laughs> like, I know it's just a single shade, but that's beautiful. And the texture is very nice. Application is seamless. I think what's working really well for this is the fact that it does have that satin kind of sheen to it. Because it just helps lessen the intensity of the uh, of the darkness like of the the color itself it just kind of helps soften that a little bit okay so i did take just a little bit of that shade and run it on the lower lash line as well just on like the outer v and now i'm gonna grab one of these juno and co brushes this is the fluffy one and this is the 06 the, the fluffy blending brush as it would be i'm actually gonna take this brush and just pick up a little bit of this product here and use that to lightly diffuse through the crease one more time just to make sure everything is nice and blended because i still wanted to bring up the color just a little bit into the crease but I didn't want to bring it up with that packer brush and have it be too intense. I wanted it to be, you know, just, just the right amount of diffused. All right, and then really quickly, with the entire eye uh, covered in that one single shadow, I am going to take and just pop a little bit of the Kier Wise uh, highlight up here just to help lift the brow a little bit. You know what, my God, those colors actually look beautiful together on the brow. Oh, God, that is such... You know what, the more, that, the more that I use this highlight from them, the more that I'm just like, I'm so impressed by it because even though it is a lighter intensity, I just, I really kind of feel, feel like I'm connecting with it on like a spiritual level. So at this point, before I go into the mascara portion, I do want to lock all my makeup in. And so I'm going to grab some of my Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. Crap, you guys, I just freaking remembered. I wanted to use this. Uh, I love that I'm telling you like you're devastated, but I wanted to use this by Terry Powder one more time just to see like how it would be as a finishing powder. So I'm still, I'm still gonna try it because again, why not? We're here, we're testing things. That's okay. You know, it's that's the thing too. I feel like, um, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I'm the type of person when I sit down and I film these this kind of a video where it's, you know, testing things out and we're just trying to get a feel for stuff. I don't ever mind like if things go wrong necessarily, like things don't work, products don't blend, or we have to, you know, try to test the same product more than once. It doesn't bother me at all because I kind of feel like that's the purpose of these videos. If anything, I feel like as time has went on, actually, you know what? This would probably be the perfect little brush. This is just like a little highlighting brush, but it has a nice little flimsy moment to it. Um, but I feel like more often than not nowadays, like these type of videos that to me, again, they're supposed to be, you know, testing and trying and getting into new products. I feel like people go into them with like this weird, you know, oh, they have to be perfect or they suck. <laughs> kind of mentality and that is not me at all I'm just I, is that weird like you guys can tell me down in the comments if it bothers you now as far as this powder goes I gotta say I've used it like over in these areas you know right through here just more so as a way to test out like that pore filling see how the refinement looks and I actually think it looks really good now something I would caution you on if you wanted to test it out um I would be mindful of when you're using this like I just went in with this brush and I really made sure like all over in circular motions um I made sure to uh, really 
really buff it in because it does have that more uh, white casty kind of look to it. And if you don't buff it in, you're going to end up with like weird little white chunky patches. Other than that, I actually think it looks pretty nice, especially if you consider too like all of the, the problems that I've had with all of these various um, items. I actually feel like it looks pretty good, you know, all things considered. You know what? What the hell? Seems how we're here and I just love setting sprays. Um, I just really love just, you know, get, getting that, you know, set going on. Let's grab the Hourglass. This is the Veil Soft Focus setting spray and uh, we're going to get our blur on just a little bit more. Mm, really blur the skin. Yes, honey. All right, so I am in it to win it now, honey. I just put that veil spray over it, and I tell you what, that veil setting spray with that by Terry shit, oh, oh, right over here. Ooh, she is looking very nice. Anyways, let's go ahead at this point and move on to eyes, and for that, I'm actually gonna be diving into this little kit that I picked up from Charlotte Tilbury. This is their Pillow Talk Push-Up Eye Secrets, and it comes with the Pillow Talk um, Push-Up Lashes Mascara and a mini of their brown eyeliner. So I'm going to go ahead first, I think, and kick things off with just the mascara, and then we'll, we'll kind of see how that builds and go from there. All right, you guys, so I am back, and I did just apply both of those to my lashes, my upper and lower waterline, respectively, and the actual uh, pencil here, this is in Barbarella Brown, and I actually quite like the consistency. It's a very soft, very deep color. You can see it right through here. It just has a ton of pigmentation. Now we have to move on, and <laughs> we, got, we got to talk about this mascara, okay? So the thing about this um, that is really kind of throwing me off is actually the applicator because it's uh, it's literally a flat paddle wand but with spikes on both sides and I'm not I'm not exactly sure how to feel about that because um, I've, I've never used a mascara like this one so what I'm gonna say because I don't think it would be fair for me to just be like oh I hate it it's awful um, because I, I just like I said I've never used one like this but what I will say is that as far as my lashes go like as far as the end result looks um, this is definitely a, a mascara that will give you nice definition. It will give you separation. It's not going to give you a ton of like bulkiness or a ton of volume, but you will get a little bit of lengthening from it. So more so than anything with this, I think, you know, again, brush and application aside, I do think that the mascara works. I was able to build it. The formula is a little bit heavier. So like in terms of, you know, how it feels when you're dragging it through, you can definitely feel them being heavier, a little maybe stickier, sticking together. Um, but even with that, I was able to get, you know, a decent amount of uh, actual lift to my lashes. Right now, last up, I did decide to pick up one of these lipsticks. This is from Dominique Cosmetics, and this is their new Soft Focus Demi Matte Lipstick, and I have this in the shade Freckles, which is just a nice nude brown, and y'all know I love a good nude brown moment, so I'm gonna take and just apply. I'm not gonna go, I don't think I need a no, I don't need a lip liner for that. It's not super dark. Ooh, I love this color. What do you guys think? Mm, mm, God, that's a good color. Especially for this, like the eyes have a little bit more of, like I said, that cool kind of pewter undertone. And this lip actually pairs beautifully, even though it's on the warmer side. Ooh. All right, beautiful people, with that, this is, of course, how the full face came together, um, how everything looks, you know, once you zoom the camera out. And I'm going to go ahead really quickly. We're going to get into the final thoughts, wrap up. I, I just want to touch on a couple little things. But uh, before we do that, or as we do that, I'm going to put the up close on the screen. That way you guys can see how everything is looking. And I think for me, you know, going into a final wrap up, I do like to kind of draw from both sides um, as far as what's good and what's bad. But with this one, what really surprises me is actually for all of the issues that I had, you know, going through with the complexion, the concealer, and, and how everything just was not working. I have to say, at the end, for all of the products to look like this, um, I mean, is it perfect? No, but I am impressed that they were all able to melt together. I think the thing with me and, and videos like this, especially when they go in the direction this one did, it just kind of reminds me that, you know, products, they don't always work the same on everybody, and even though a lot of what I picked up, you know, it might have been highly rated, it might have, you know, been a great product for someone else, A, that doesn't make it a great product for me, and that's okay, and B, it just because you have two really good products, it doesn't mean that they work together. It doesn't mean, you know, like, let's say we're talking about the Ilia foundation. Maybe that product just doesn't work well with this by Terry powder, or maybe this by Terry powder just doesn't work well with a setting spray or with, you know, any other product. And I really do hope that with my videos that comes across because, you know, it, like I said, in today's video, we had a lot going both directions. Some stuff I didn't care for, some stuff um, I really don't have an opinion on, like the foundation, because I, truthfully, I didn't give it a fair shake. Like, 
that this went so far in the wrong direction that it's just it wouldn't be fair for me to judge the foundation um but at the same time there are products that i enjoyed i really did like that cure wise uh the eyeshadow i quite enjoyed this highlight and this lip from dominique cosmetics i think is absolutely beautiful um and then also that little palette too from juno and co even though it's not again maybe like a color or a tone that i would traditionally go with i do think it's beautiful and i will test it out and i'll see how i can incorporate it because even as a cooler shade i think it does look beautiful and it sculpts the face the powders are beautiful and i just i don't know i think that there's a lot to be said about a video like this where um maybe things just don't go as planned. You know, they, they definitely didn't go as planned, but I'm not mad at it. And in the end, you know, we were able to make, make it all work. And I just, I don't know. I think it's important to highlight the good, the bad, and kind of everything in between. Anyways, I think that's everything. As I said at the start, you can subscribe, turn on your post notifications, follow me on Instagram, which that one I would personally really appreciate. And um, yeah, I think that that's everything. Thank you guys all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right, now, stop it, stop it. Who do you think you are, Mr. Big Star? Who, 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 who? You are never gonna get my love. Oh, yeah. Ow, ow. Ew. Ow. 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 <laughs> Page stop.